Morning, everybody. Hope you've all had a lovely weekend. We are ready for some more percentages and maths today. All right, so for our warm up today, I've done a little bit like we did on Friday, a fluency warm up, calculating various percentages. Now, I'm not going to give you any help today, but what I would like you to do is to see if you can calculate these percentages of these different amounts. And my top tip for them is can finding 10% or 1% first help? The only thing I'm going to tell you is remember to find 10%, you divide by 10, you divide by 1%, you divide by 100. Some of you were getting that a little bit muddled last week. All right, so have a go, pause the video and then come back when you're finished. All right, so hopefully for number one, 50% of 90, you will have thought, right, well, I need to know 1%, that's going to be the one to help me here. Now, 1% of 90 would be 9, so 3%, I'm going to times that by 9, would give me an answer. 47. 40% of 60, you'd need to find 10% this time, wouldn't you, of 60, which would be 6. And so 40%, I'm going to multiply that by 4 to give an answer of 24. 20% 20 of 180, I would find 10% first, which is 18. And then I've got to times that by 2 to give me 36. Now 5% of 220, I would still find 10%. OK, for this one, and I would find 10% of 220, which would give me 22. And then in order to find um, 5%, I would have to halve that. Can we all remember that one? So I would find 10% first, which would be 22. And then to find 5%, I would halve my 22, which would give me an answer of 11. That's going to go over the top now. Never mind. Now, for 25% of 200, I would use the information here that I know that 25% is the same as one quarter. So I would actually use that to find 25% of 200 by dividing 200 by 4, which would give me an answer of 50. Now, finally, 65% is one where you've got a few fiddly bits to do. So for this one, I would actually find 10% first. 160, which gives an answer of 16. Now I need 60%. So actually, what I've got to do here is I've got to do 16 and times it by 6. So 6 times 6 is 36, 6 times 6 is 1, add 3 more is 96. I'm still not finished though because I need 65%. So I'm going to go back to my 10% answer now here of 16. And because now I need 5%, I'm going to halve that, which will give me 8. And then I have to do 96. Add the 8 because that's the 60% plus the 5%, put them back together to give me an answer of 104. Okay, so I hope you've got on okay with those. What are we doing today then? Well, today we're looking at things. It's a bit more tricky today because we're finding missing values. So this is almost a bit like we've got to use the inverse for this today. So we've got to use our understanding of percentages and fractions to help us find these missing values. And we're going to use bar models to help visualise the missing part. So let's see and discover. So we've got here some children doing some athletics and they're doing the long jump. Now, Jamila has just had a go and she has jumped a big long jump of 3.75 metres. Now, her teacher says, well done, that's 50% as far as the woman's long jump world record. Now, that means she hasn't jumped as far, she's jumped 50% as far. Now, the question at the bottom is saying, what is the world record then for women's long jump? Let's have a look how we would calculate that. So here's the fact that we know. 3.5, sorry, 3.75 metres is 50% as far as the long jump record. Now this girl here has said, I think I then have to work out 50% of 3.75. Do you agree with that? Let's see what this other girl here says. She says, I think you need to do it differently. In this question, I know a part, but I have to work out the whole today. And I think she's correct because she's saying 3.75 is 50% as far. It's not saying what is 50% of this. So the sum would actually look like this, 50% of something. So here in at the problem now, we don't know what the 50%, what the whole number is that we're finding 50% of. All we know at the moment is the answer. 
So how can we calculate that missing part? Now here's a bar model to help. I really need these. I find these very helpful to help me visualize. I'm definitely quite a visual learner to see what it looks like. Otherwise I get these a bit muddled in my mind. Now that means at the moment we don't know. Normally when we do these, we know our whole number, but at the moment the world record, the whole number here at the top, we don't know. But we know that Jamila has jumped 50%, which is the same as a half, isn't it? Of what the world record is. Have a think, what do you think we might need to do next? Well, here we go. So there's our bar model. Now, if you've got this correct, what you have to do next is actually double the 3.75 meters because the 3.75 that Jamila has jumped is half as far as the world record. So the opposite of that is to actually double the 3.75 to give us a final answer of 7.5 meters. So the world record is actually seven and a half meters. Okay, let's have a look at another one then. So Lee jumps 49 centimeters in the high jump. This is 20% of the world record for men's high jump. What is the world record? Now this one's different this time because last time we were looking at 50%, which was a half. Now 20%, can you remember what that was as a fraction of an amount? If you're not too sure, remember the percent always means out of 100, so 20 out of 100, what does that simplify down to? Ah, it simplifies down to a fifth. Now, I think that's gonna help us. So here is the calculation that we need. 20% of something equals 49 centimeters. And here we are, 20% is equivalent to one fifth. So here we go this time with the bar model is that we can know for sure that because it's a fifth, our bar model has got to be divided into five parts. And because we know that one fifth or 20% has a value of 49 centimetres, that means that one fifth here, it's not going to show on there because it's red, one fifth is the same as 49 centimetres. So how do you think now we're going to calculate the whole amount? Well, I think how many fifths are there to make a whole? There are one, two, three, four, five. Therefore, what we've got to do is 49 and times it by five. And that will tell us the whole amount. And we can check that, can't we, by thinking, well, is one fifth of that whole amount 49? And if so, we've got it right. So 49 times five, we can see down here at the bottom, is 245 centimetres. So that there is the whole world record amount. So we can see here the record for the men's high jump is 245 centimetres. Okay, so let's have a look at this think together. Now these ones what I'd like you to do is have a we'll read the question, maybe pause the video, have a go and then come back and see if you're right because you just need to get your head going in the right way with these. So this is work out the missing value. This time 10% of something equals three. Now, 10% is equivalent to one tenth. So our bar model underneath has been divided into 10 parts. We know that one tenth is worth three. So how are we going to calculate our whole amount? Think about what we're going to have to multiply back by with. Remember on the previous slide, when it was one fifth, we times by five. Now it's one tenth. So have a think, what are we going to multiply by? So we're going to do three, aren't we? And we're going to times it by 10. So the whole amount is actually 30. So one tenth of 30 equals three. Now we can check this, can't we, by working it through in the way that we know. We can think, well, 10% we divide by 10. So 10% of 30, 30 divided by 10 equals three. Yes, it's right. Therefore, our missing value must be correct. When you're doing these, it's a really good idea to check them through in that way. Okay, pause the video. Okay, so for this one, we're finding out 20% of something equals five. Now, we looked at this earlier. We know that 20% is the same as one fifth. So it's telling us that one fifth has the value of five. Now, in this case, we're looking at fifths and one fifth is worth five. How many have we got in total? We've got one, two, three, four, five to make a whole. So we're actually doing five times by five and that will give us an answer of 25. 
Now let's check if we're correct here. So we're saying 20%, 25 equals five, are we right? So if I wanted to know what one fifth of 25 was, I would divide that, wouldn't I, by five, and that would give me an answer of five, which means this is correct. If I wanted to check it in a percentage way, to work out 20% of 25, I would find 10% first, which would be 2.5. And then to find 20%, I would have to times that by two, which would give me an answer of five. So a double check there using our inverse operations to show that we are correct. OK, one more. Now, this is a bit harder because it hasn't put the, um, the bars into the bar model this time. You've got to decide. So what I'm going to say is think carefully what fraction is 25% the same as that will give you a clue as to how many pieces to divide your bar model into. Pause the video and come back. All right, so hopefully what you've done is you've divided your bar model into four pieces. Why have I done four? Well, because I know that 25% is the same as one quarter. And this time one quarter of something equals 30. So one quarter equals 30. So I have got one, two, three, four quarters, so that means I must have to do 30 times by four, and that gives me an answer of 120. So 25% of 120 is 30. Now, can I check that? Yes, I can. Well, 25% is the same as a quarter, so if I do 120, at some moment, I'm doing the inverse, aren't I, here? Divide that by four, that's going to give me an answer of 30. Therefore, I know this answer is correct. All right, last one then, this is more of a word problem now. 120 people arrive by bus to watch sports day. This is 40% of the spectators. How many spectators are there in total? Now this is slightly more complicated because this time 40%, like our other ones, was very obvious. It was one tenth, one fifth, one quarter, one half. This time it's still four tenths. So what you have to think in this case, if there isn't an equivalent fraction that's easy to divide into, is I always say to children, put it into its over 100th form and then simplify it. So this simplifies down to four tenths, that's the simplest form. And this time it's saying, well, four tenths is the same as 120. Now this time, in order for us to cal calculate the whole number, We've got to do an extra step because we can't just think, well, I'm going to do 120 times 10. That's not going to work, is it? What I've got to think is, first of all, is what actually is the value of just one tenth? Because that's going to make me be able to answer this correctly. So one tenth, how would I do it? Well, I know that four tenths is 120. So I could do 120 and divide it by four. And that would give me an answer of 30. So I know that one tenth has the value of 30. So now I can calculate the whole amount because I can think, well, I'm in tenths. I know that one tenth equals 30. So in order to get the whole, I've got to do 30 times by 10. That's going to give me an answer of 300, isn't it? So my whole is actually worth 300. Now I can check this in a similar way because I my first information that's given by the question is that 40% of something equaled 120 and we've worked out that something as 300. Now are we right? Let's see. So 10% divided by 10 that would give us 30. 40% times it by four, that gives us 120. So this is correct. So do you see that if you haven't got a percentage given to you that's a fraction in its simplest form, that sometimes you need to do that extra step. So here we realized that 40% was the same as four tenths. So we actually had to find out one tenth before we could then go back and find out our whole. Okay, good. 
So today's work, let me move myself off the challenge in case people want to be able to look at this. So today's work is called Finding Missing Values and it's on pages 47 to 49. Now this is more tricky and I really encourage you to use the bar models to help you get your head around what you're multiplying with and how to visualise these as a problem. Now, if you do find this very hard, please send me a message and I can give you as much help as possible. If it is a challenge, I recommend that you focus, first of all, on questions one and two. And actually, then I would go to question five as well. Question three and four are more word problems, which are a little bit more challenging. But if you want to just gain the fluency and the understanding, question one, two and five will really get you there. Please don't spend hours and hours struggling over something that's difficult. Make sure you message us if you find this a bit too tricky. Good luck, send me what you've done and I'll see you again tomorrow. Well done, bye bye.